thy neighbor Walk up and say how be ya Gee, but I'm glad to see ya Pal, how's tricks? What's new? Love thy neighbor And you will find your labor A great deal easier Life will be breezier If you love thy neighbor Have you called Eddie? He's gonna be late for work if he doesn't hurry. Yeah, I called him twice. The last time I told him it was ten to seven. He just said, in whose favour? <laughs> I think he's a bit hung over. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> you better try again. <laughs> good morning, Eddie. Is it? Oh. Hung over again, Eddie? No, dear, no. But my hair hurts. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> burn it, burn it. Oh, I'm sorry, Eddie. It's just that some of the riddles in this comic are hilarious. <laughs> oh, yes, really. What do you get? What do you get? What do you get? I'll tell you what you get in a minute. <laughs> what do you get if you cross the Atlantic Ocean with the Titanic? What? Halfway. <laughs> Bernard, here's the shopping list for the party. Yes, Joyce. Have you got the money I gave you? Yeah, it's quite safe. I've tied it in the corner of my hanky. <laughs> Don't forget tonight, Eddie. No, 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 no. What's tonight? We're having Jim over for a few drinks. It's his birthday. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I never knew he was, you know. Who was what? Muhammad Ali. What's he talking about? Do you have any idea? Well, it says here that for his last fight, Ali carried off a purse worth $2 million. So? Well, he can't be so tough if he carries a purse. <laughs> Will you hit him or shall I? Bernard, you better get a move on. What's the rush, dear? He's got to pick up Jim's birthday cake. Oh. So I'll take you to work. Good. And what do you want for breakfast, Eddie? Cereal? No, dear. Too noisy. No, no. <laughs> Just have something strong and black. Strong and black? How about Muhammad Ali? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going, I'm going. See you at work, Eddie. Oh. What have you put in his oats this morning? I think he's just a bit excited about the party tonight. Yes, well, don't put any sherry in the trifle, otherwise we'll all be in trouble. <laughs> oh, dear, I feel so tired, dear. Terrible. Didn't you sleep well? No, no, I had a bad dream. I dreamt I was shipwrecked on a desert island with Rackle Welsh, Jane Fonda and Sophia Loren. <laughs> what was wrong with that? In the dream, I was Bridget Bardo. <laughs> Yes, George. I think we can do 2,000 thrush washes by then. Oh, hang on a minute. Jim, can we do 2,000 thrush washes in a hurry? Yeah, sure, Mr. Joe. I'll move Eddie Booth out of split pins into washers. No problems, George. <laughs> split pins is kid stuff. Now this, this is a big league. You reckon you can manage one of these, Pommy? When did that come over? With the first fleet? Oh. <laughs> I'd work one of those with my eyes shut. We employ engineers, not comedians. Oh. Anyway, Kitty will show you how to operate it. Kitty? Do you have women working here? No, Kitty's a fella. Funny name for a fella. He's a funny fella. <laughs> Touch of the horse's hoof. <laughs> Speak of the devil, here he is. <laughs> Kitty, this is Eddie Booth. Pleased to meet you. The pledge is all mine. <laughs> Kitty, I want you to show Eddie the ropes. I'll show him everything. Get off. Don't be like that, I'm angry, frankly. Would you like a quick session now? Pardon? <laughs> On the machine, cheeky. Oh, you are bold. You married? Yes. What a waste. <laughs> oh, what a waste. <laughs> Good morning, Jim. Ah, here are the lads. I'd better introduce you. Now, Bernard, you know. You know him. I live with him. Bernard, you beat me to it. <laughs> Control yourself, Kitty. You promised. Ah, Charlie Wilson. Charlie, this is Eddie Booth. Pleased to meet you, kid. There you go, mate. Eddie's a pom. What, another one? Another one? <laughs> yeah, we've already got one here. What do you mean to say you've got another Englishman working here? Yeah, that's right. He's from Lancashire. Oh, marvellous. If he's from Lancashire, it'll be all right. Salt of the earth. A true pom. Hey, Arnold. Yeah? Come out here and meet a fellow pom. 
Uh, Arnold, Eddie Booth. Pleased to be you, Squire. Nice to know we're working side by side with a fellow Lancastrian. Pleased to meet you too, Bruce. Welcome to Australia. I hope you like it here. It's a real view country. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they said you were from Lancashire. That's right. But I left there in 1947. <laughs> Do you mean to say you've worked here over 30 years and they still call you a pom? Yeah. What chance have I got? <laughs> Not much, Bruce. The name's Eddie. Come on, you lead sleeves, full finger. Get me your working togs. Is that it then? Have I met them all? Yep, that's a full workforce. Mm, not exactly British Leyland, is it? <laughs> no, we work here, mate. <laughs> well, any questions? Yes. What time's tea break? When I tell you. <laughs> Uh, you can use this locker, Teddy. Eddie. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you ever go back to England? No. I might go back next year, but, you know, my mum still lives in Manchester. She's 91. <laughs> She'd need to be. <laughs> what about your dad? Oh, no idea where he is. <laughs> After they'd been married about two years, they had a terrible fight, and dad walked out on her. Oh. I'm sorry to hear that. Mm. My mum had to bring up 12 kids. Oh. <laughs> 12? Mm. Oh, we were a large family. Yeah, no, no, hang on a minute. You just said that your dad left your mum after they'd only been married two years. <laughs> and that's right. Yeah, well, how did she manage to have 12 kids? Well, Dad came back now and again to apologise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If he comes back again, you'll be working from memory. <laughs> Don't take any notice of him, Eddie. He's the biggest liar this side of the black stump. <laughs> hey, listen, lads, listen. What time is tea break? Oh, we don't have a tea break. <laughs> no tea break? Joyce brings coffee around to our machines. Well, that's not right. It's against union rules. I mean, look. Chapter 4, paragraph 7, page 32, line 9, and I quote, All employees shall be entitled to a tea break after two hours continuous work. It's union rules. We don't have a union. No union? No tea break? I'm working with a lot of scabs and blacklegs. <laughs> what do we want a union for, Eddie? Solidarity. If we had a union, think of the benefits you'd get. Like what? Like this. I don't know. this way. Now, you go to see the boss, right? You say, I want a rise. He says, no way. Right, you say, I'm going on strike. What would happen? He'd sack me. Exactly. Right, <laughs> right? Now, what would happen if we all went to him and said, we want a rise or we're going on strike? He'd, he'd sack a lot of us. Yeah, cos, like, he'd have to have someone to work machines. You'd have him by the gulagongs. Oh, my God, he's got something there. Oh, I hope it's not infectious. <laughs> if we had a union, we'd have a proper tea break, a shorter working week, and a bigger pay packet. Oh, I like that. All those in favour say aye. Aye! <laughs> Where are all the men? Search me. Ah, just the men I want to see. What's going on here? Where is everyone? I've been talking to my brothers. Brothers? <laughs> what brothers? <laughs> my brother workers. And we've just decided to form a union. Well, you can just decide to unform it. Knickers. <laughs> it has been carried unanimously. You'll be carried unanimously in a minute. Out on a stretcher. Uh, uh, easy, Jim. He's got the British disease. Do you mind? I was vaccinated before I came out of here. <laughs> Unions are the British disease, and I won't have them in this factory. Hard luck. And you can look for another job. Oh, yes. Well, if you sack me, you'll have to sack us all. That's OK. Bye, mate. Hang on, Jim. Let's not be hasty. Excuse us a minute, Mr. Booth. You're not going to stand for this. We can't afford to lose all the men. This is a rush job and it's worth big money. We'll hire more men. We'll still have to train them in the operation. Well, let's face it, Jim, he's got us by the gulagongs. <laughs> oh, let him have his union, and when the job's finished, we'll sling the little pommy rat bag right out of here. <laughs> Mr. Booth. Bye. If we accept your union, can you guarantee it won't affect the company output? Definitely. You keep the lads happy and they'll work. Do you know, I wouldn't be at all surprised if production didn't go up. I wouldn't be surprised. 
I'd be staggered. No. <laughs> All right, you can have your union. Jim here will handle any negotiations or complaints you may have. Oh, Mr. Uh, Joe, I... Right? Okay. Okay. Mr. Joe. <laughs> I don't like it, Mr. Joe. Neither do I, but I don't want anything to hold up that order. And I don't want anything holding up my fishing trip either. Another weekend I couldn't face with Mrs. Marley, so <laughs> let's get right. Right. You like to have Mr. Marley. Now move it. What's this? The Country Women's Association. <laughs> now. Just a minute. Stay where you are, brothers. And what's the matter now? I have convened an emergency meeting to draw up a list of union rules. Oh, strike me lucky. Can't you do that in your lunch break? Union rules state that all meetings must be held during working hours. You haven't got any union rules yet. That's the first item on the agenda. <laughs> yes, don't worry. You'll get your thrust washers on time. We had a bit of a problem with the men this morning, but everything's under control now. Bloody bushwhacker! Pommy poofter! <laughs> Servile ochre capitalist! Stinking Pommy Bolshevik! <laughs> What did you call me? Stinking Pommy Bolshevik. <laughs> Don't you call me a Bolshevik. I'm a little left of centre. <laughs> You're a Bolshevik. Right, right, that's it. Now what are you doing? I'm making a note of it. That comes under violence of the tongue. What about calling me a bloody bushwhacker? What's that come under? The truth. <laughs> How do you spell Bolshevik? B-A-double-L. Oh, now you're being bloody stupid. Bloody stupid, bloody stupid, is it? Right. Anything else you'd like to call me while I've got my pen out? I'll shove it all down. For all I care, you can shove it right up your... <laughs> go on, go on. Oh, I'm sick and tired of this. In Mr. Marley's absence, I am in charge. And you'll do what I say. Over my dead body. That is the most sensible remark you've made all morning. <laughs> the trouble with you is you're out of touch. Out of touch? Yes. How much time do you spend on the factory floor? A damn sight more than you. You're always arguing the toss. The men have a right to be represented. And in their wisdom, they've chosen me as their man of destiny. Some men are born great. Some men achieve greatness. And others have greatness thrust upon them. <laughs> All right. All right, let's talk this over sensibly, like two intelligent... I agree. Where's the other one? I've seen it all before. As soon as you get a union in here, it's a social club. You hardly ever see the men. They're either playing cards or smoking and reading in the dunny. As I recall, there's nothing in union rules that prohibits an employee having a smoke or a read while answering the call of nature. Maybe so. But my problem is that the call of nature will be heard far too often. And what's more, mate, every time it's heard, the call will be answered. Oh, will it? <laughs> in that case, appropriate action, as you call it, will be taken. What sort of action? You'll find out. <laughs> there you go, Jim. How's that? That's fine, Bert. No, well, that's oh, fair, no, fair. No, I think two and a half hours is quite long enough. Thank you very much. <laughs> What's this then? In future, any man wishing to use the restroom. I'll have to ask me for the key. I see. In that case, I will inform my members we are now in a state of dispute. You can do what you like. I'm not going to be dictated to by a jumped up pommy commie. <laughs> right. That's it. Everybody out. <laughs> Hey, love, do you still reckon this birthday party's a good idea? I mean, with the way things went at work between Jim and Eddie, maybe we ought to call it off. No, Bernard, we've got to try and bring about a reconciliation. Yeah, I suppose you're right. When are we going to cut the cake? Well, I thought we might at least wait until Jim gets here. It is his birthday. Like the joy party, I'm going. Going? Where? To the club. Oh, Eddie, you promised you'd stay for Jim's birthday. No, Joyce, I'm sorry, love. Look, I am a man of principle. My place is with my union brothers. Destiny has called me to take my place in history. I am called and I am committed. Oh, like my uncle. 
<laughs> you mean your uncle was a union leader? No, he was committed. <laughs> well, I've never met the man, but I can see a strong family resemblance. <laughs> well, I'm going. Eddie, I'm asking you to stay. Yeah, try one of my nuts. <laughs> I'm sorry, Bernard. Not even your nuts can persuade me. <laughs> How about a nice, cold can of beer? Oh, all right, then. Every man has his price. Mm -hmm. Good evening, all. Hello, Jim. Hello, Jim. And others. <laughs> Hello, it's Captain Bly of the Bounty. <laughs> Happy birthday, Jim. <laughs> is it all right if I wish him happy birthday? That is a matter for your own conscience, brother. But do remember this. He who sups with the devil needs a very long spoon. <laughs> oh, no worries then. We're only having cake, so I won't need a spoon. <laughs> happy birthday, Jim. Bernard, I've given the matter a lot of thought, and I think I know how you can help the Union win this fight. Really? How? Join his side. <laughs> Let's not talk shop, eh? That's perfectly all right with me, Joyce. And we of the Union. Good. Sit down. Well, what's going to happen about the strike then, Jim? <laughs> Bernard! It's all right, Joyce. It's only a storm in a teacup. Uh, storm in a teacup, is it? You won't say that when this country grinds to a halt. Just you wait till you see long queues of people going from door to door, trying to find a thrust washer. <laughs> you sound like every other pommy shop steward. <coughs> why do they call them shop stewards? I mean, it's not really a shop, is it? Bernard, why don't you tell them one of those jokes from your comic book? <laughs> your stupidity could cost the company a valuable order. The management have only got to agree to a few reasonable requests and work will resume. And what are these reasonable requests, Eddie? Free access to the restroom at all times, colour television, free lunch and vouchers, productivity bonus, travelling expenses, free overalls, and two weeks' holiday pay at Christmas. Oh. <laughs> and what's the management's answer, Jim? A lock on the dunny door. Oh. <laughs> you shut your mouth. You've had your say. I beg to differ. We have hardly yet begun to fight, little pommy pinko. <laughs> Big Australian puff. Marie Antoinette. <laughs> What's she got to do with it? Well, in times of trouble, she said, if the workers haven't got bread, let them eat cake. Let's cut the cake. Yes! Let's light the candles. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jim. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Jim. Happy birthday, Jim. Thank you, Bernard. Thank you, Joyce. <laughs> Eddie. Eddie. Sing happy birthday to Jim. <laughs> We shouldn't be here at all. Mr. Marley's back today. When he hears about this, the lock will be off that door and we'll be back at work in five minutes. Or we'll all get the sack. <laughs> Him over. He wouldn't dare. He'll climb down. They always do. Brother Eddie, Mr. Marley wants to see you. Very well, lads. What did I tell you? Today we'll go down in Australia's history. <laughs> Brother Bernard, in my absence, you are deputy. <laughs> hey, 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 United is there. Is that so? Well, well. Yes, I can fix that in a few minutes. Uh, come in. Molly. Uh, sit down, Mr. Booth. Yes, yes, you can leave that with me. Right, thank you. Now, Mr. Booth, what's this little problem? We, uh, we formed a union with your permission. 
But in your absence, your representative, Mr. Lawson, saw fit to usurp the correct procedure of negotiation and caused a lock to be fixed on the outer door of the dunny. <laughs> I see. And uh, what's this? Oh, that is a list of our reasonable requirements. I see. Color television, free luncheon vouchers, productivity bonus, two weeks' wages at Christmas. <laughs> Well, Mr. Booth, I think we can settle this quite amicably. <laughs> I will remove the lock from the restroom door, and you will all get back to work immediately. <laughs> and we will all carry on, just as we were before you came. Otherwise, you will find yourself on the next plane back to England. Do I make myself clear? Now, hang about. No, you hang about, Mr. Booth. That was the immigration department on the phone just now. It appears your visa application was incorrectly filled in. <laughs> and unless I, as your sponsor, correct it, you are an illegal immigrant. An illegal immigrant? Me? <laughs> now do I make myself clear? <laughs> Mr. Booth. Mr. Marley. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Marley. I knew you'd see it our way. <laughs> well, lads, what did I tell you? Would you like to do the honors, Mr. Lawson? Just a minute. He didn't agree to everything, did he? Well, more or less, we compromised on a few points. Do we get the color telly? Uh, no, I conceded that point. <laughs> and the free lunch and vouchers? We deferred that issue. The productivity bonus? Under discussion. Travelling expenses? He said he'd think about it. Free overalls? No, I let him win that one. And I don't suppose you're going to get two weeks extra pay at Christmas either? That has been referred back. Referred back to when? Next Christmas. <laughs> In other words, we got nothing. Yes, we did. We got recognition. That's a big step forward. And as your shop steward... Uh, Brother Eddie. Brother Bird. <clears throat> uh, in your absence, we convened an extraordinary meeting and uh, we've elected a new shop steward. <laughs> <laughs> Unanimously. Brother Charlie. Not me, Brother Eddie. Brother Kitty. Not me, Brother Eddie. Brother Arnold. Not me, Brother Eddie. <laughs> you. Not me, Brother Eddie. Me, Brother Eddie. Etching <laughs> 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 Walk up and say I'll be a Gee, but I'm glad to see a powerhouse tricks. What's new? Love thy neighbor, and you will find your labor a great deal easier. Life will be breezier if you love thy neighbor. Oh,